In this video, I'll make some recommendations for a good AI PC. Now, according to Intel, an AI PC is a PC that has a number of attributes. One of these is that they need it to have a CPU, a GPU and an NPU. Now, if you're wondering what those are, a CPU and a GPU, these are the traditional powerhouses within the computer. CPU handles fast response and the GPU handles high output. This is where a lot of the processing takes place. The NPU is something new. This is a power efficient mechanism for processing artificial intelligence. It's a neural processing unit and these are beginning to appear on the Windows platform. However, there is a manufacturer who has been including these in their systems for several years now. Apple introduced the Apple Silicon chips in 2020 and with these chips they are available in the macbook air and the macbook pro laptops now if we take a look at the macbook air this macbook air is configured for 24 gigabytes of unified memory which is the maximum that you can get and one terabyte of ssd storage this is the recommended minimum for working with these sort of large data sets that you get with artificial intelligence now, Apple systems have got good graphics, they've got good CPUs, and they have a neural engine, which is the neural processing unit. With this sort of setup, you could easily handle software like Photoshop and Lightroom, which has got AI enhanced features, and you could start making some attempt to work with some of the large models like Stable Diffusion and other generative AI models. The cost is $2,099. Now the MacBook Air was a 15 inch monitor. This one here is the MacBook Pro and this comes with a 14 inch monitor. It is a more powerful system all around. We can go up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory on this particular configuration. However, on other configurations, the MacBook Pro can go up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. And all of that is available to the CPU, the GPU and the NPU. Again, with one terabyte of SSD storage, this comes to 2,199. That's quite a lot for what you're actually getting, but the MacBooks have got very, very good displays. On the Windows side, this Lenovo ThinkPad P16 has got a, a graphics card from Nvidia called the RTX A2000. Now this is a an entry-level graphics card which should provide 8 gigabytes of processing power for the GPU. With Nvidia they have what are known as tensor cores and with the Nvidia RTX A2000 like their other modern systems not only is it a GPU but it's also an NPU because they have got tensor cores that basically act as the neural processing unit. The tensor cores are very good at handling artificial intelligence tasks. Now, the really interesting thing is that for this price of similar price to the price that we saw for the Apple devices, we are getting 128 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of SSD. So this particular machine is capable in ways that the Apple machines are not capable. However, it doesn't have the unified memory architecture. So the RTX A2000, as powerful as it is, is limited to just eight gigabytes of memory. And in some situations that could actually be a bottleneck. A useful upgrade is to this ThinkPad with the RTX A3000. The RTX A3000 has got 12 gigabytes of VRAM and that allows it more uh, flexibility in handling larger models. The price here is $2,799 and for that sort of money you're getting the same amount of DDR5 RAM, 128GB and 4TB of storage. You're also getting a more powerful CPU which is the Core i9. This one, although it is more powerful, you don't really rely very much on the CPU for AI related tasks. It is far more important to get a powerful GPU. And talking of powerful GPUs, this very high-end model of the ThinkPads contains an NVIDIA RTX 5000. Now all of these RTX cards are Ada Lovelace generation. This is the latest generation. This is the most powerful generation. Roughly equivalent here to an RTX 4090 mobile. 
Now the price at 5299 is pretty high, but we also get a display that begins to almost challenge the Apple displays. It's a 4K display with very, very good color. But the main thing you're getting here is that very powerful graphics card with 16 gigabytes of memory. So this can handle some larger models. Now, when we take a look at Apple, similar price item, $5,700, this Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch has got a much better display. It's a liquid retina display, XDR. It's one of the M3 Max chips, which can go all the way up to 128 gigabytes of memory. And this configuration has got 128 gigabytes of unified memory. So this is available to the CPU, the GPU, and the NPU. There's not really much limit you, you, you can find here on what sort of models you can work with. 128 gigabytes for the GPU is something that you, you basically can't get on the Windows platform. So it is uniquely powerful in a way that even the high-end Windows systems are not. The price is quite a lot more. You're getting four terabytes of SSD, very, very fast SSD, uh, as with all Apple devices. And this guy here would allow you to do things that are simply not possible on the Windows platform. Finally, for the price sensitive guys out there, there are gaming laptops that can be used for AI. This Acer 2024 version of the Nitro V15 gaming laptop has got RTX 4060. This is another powerful entry level GPU, eight gigabytes of uh, memory. It is somewhat less expensive at 1429 and that allows you to save a little bit of money. Now the gaming cards, uh, the RTX cards for gaming are not quite as, not quite as sophisticated as the, uh, as the ones for the workstations. So you do lose something, but you gain things like having a very fast refresh rate for the display. So I'm not sure whether you would want to go down a little bit in terms of price, but then sacrifice some of the professionalism of the workstations. There's quite a lot of options. Now, many companies are promising new features as part of their offering. So Apple, for instance, is offering Apple intelligence. However, there are some parts of the world where these services, these features are not going to be available. This may be due to export bans or it may be due to legislation in some of these countries. In the EU especially, things like the models produced by Meta will not be available. This is due to the, quote, unpredictable nature of the European uh, regulatory environment. Apple, using a very similar reason, has said that it will not allow Apple intelligence to be available in the EU. Now, these restrictions will also not only affect the European Union, they will also affect neighboring countries. California also has some legislation which is brewing, which could potentially cause quite a lot of issues there about what sort of models and services are available. So bear in mind that not everything that the companies are advertising will be available, particularly in terms of the services and the models uh, in different countries.